Hi, this is Jim Janesey. This is Chapter 8 of the Lecture Slides for GPH 205. In this chapter, we're going to start taking a look at Europe in the Dark Ages, that is from 500 to about 1000 AD. Western art in the melting pot. What's happening at this point in Europe here is that the Roman Empire has fallen apart and invasions are coming in from the north and from the east. And from around 500 to 1000 in this area, it's an area of turmoil. So what happens here is invasions from the north and the east. Norsemen come in from uh, Denmark and various northern countries. And the populations mix. And there finally emerges a style which is Romanesque, Roman architectural forms. Here's an example of a fine wood carving brought in by uh, invaders from Norway. This actually looks rather crude, but it's very delicately done here with shapes and various kinds of, of patterns and symbols. And it makes a rather scary feature that would go on the front of a boat to scare away bad spirits. This is part of the cultural influence coming in from the north, Interesting phenomenon here, the people from the north were more interested in building in stone. As they mimic the same kind of styles here in stone that people in England would have previously constructed using wood. This is a part of an illuminated manuscript from the 8th century. And the interesting thing here is the very simplified way that the folds of the cloth are being depicted. Very long hands, and the face kind of scroll work here even for the the ears it's just kind of a caricature the person who created this wasn't interested in, in depicting humans in realistic ways they were doing this according to a certain pattern this was a way of depicting the way a holy personage would look and as we proceed through the middle ages we'll see that less and less and less emphasis is placed on drawing things in the way that your eye perceives them, but instead it perpetuates a pattern that that's the way you draw this. Here's another influence that came in with the Nordic invasions. This type of very intricate pattern work in the geometric forms here, and the care lavished upon this was part of the, the sanctity of the book that was being created here. Monks working in monasteries would have taken perhaps a year or more to create this intricate design. Romanesque style. Charlemagne fancied himself as the uh, successor to the Roman emperors, and he ruled in a portion of France and Central Europe around the 800s. He had constructed a cathedral using the then known architectural forms of the circular arch. You'll recognize some Greek columns here. This is very heavy because the only pattern they had to follow was very heavy Roman arches of a circular variety. Because the walls were so heavy, there wasn't much room for windows. It tended to be rather dark in here. This style per persisted in Europe for a few hundred years and was later supplanted by a form of architecture that opened up these walls. Now here is a rather set way of depicting St. Matthew writing the gospel that bears his name. The artist who did this, creating this small illumination, followed a pattern for how to depict the saint writing the book. Variations really weren't well accepted. You sat the saint this way. You had this draping of the drapery over the body. He's holding what's called an ink horn here, a horn that has ink in it and a pen in this hand, and he's writing. And you see some shading of the face, which is a very interesting way of a little bit more shape here to the face with the way this careful shading of light. Now, about the same time, here is another picture of the same variety, the very same pose you can see, the very same sort of a lectern. Very long fingers here, and much more of a dramatic expression on this person's face. The artist who did this uh, we think was trying to include a little more emotion in this and some of the drama. In fact, here you see very, very hurried strokes like this. And this isn't really such an elegant way of depicting the cloth being draped over the leg, although you do see here the shape of the leg emerge from it. A couple of other things that are interesting about this. Notice these extraneous things here. A little bit of plants here. And it, even it seems 
some type of a background. If you look back on the earlier one, you'll see that plain background was much more common because it didn't detract from the central figure. But here we have an attempt at some sort of a background here, perhaps to gain a little more visual interest. Now here, once again, is an illustration of the Middle Ages concept of a picture like this, the purpose of it being to illustrate some biblical scene for the benefit of people who couldn't read this. The thing that this shows that's rather typical of this era is a plain background, gold here behind the central figure who is Jesus, and it didn't really matter to get things particularly accurate in terms of position or in terms of shape. It didn't matter, for example, to make faces that were anything more than a copy of one another. So these faces all tend to be the same. Interestingly here, this is a round basin, but it looks more like a walnut shell with points at the ends. It didn't matter if you represented it particularly accurately. It was the idea of Jesus washing the apostles' feet. And here, if the closer you look at this, the more strange it seems that here's an apostle and Jesus is going to wash his foot. That is the important part of this scene. But when you look at this, you wonder, gee, if that's the man's kneecap, how is this leg attached to his body? It seems that the important thing to draw here was the leg in the basin, and then somehow to fit the man in around that. So colors here didn't have to be realistic, and the positions didn't have to be particularly realistic. But the importance of this was to illustrate the scene that the Bible first talked about. Here's another illustration of that very same concept of the Middle Ages, telling a story in a very obvious way without anything extraneous in terms of fanciness here. This is the fall of man. This is Adam. This is God. Notice here, that kind of a gesture is one of blame. God is accusing Adam of having disobeyed him. What is Adam doing? Adam is passing the buck. He's pointing to Eve. What is Eve doing? Eve is pointing at the snake. So you see, the story that's being told here is immediately obvious. Even if the bodies represented here are not particularly pleasing in terms of a modern sense of things, perhaps the thigh is a little too thick here, and it isn't, the artistry isn't all that necessary. This is a bronze door plate that would have been at eye level on a cathedral, and as people entered, this is what they saw. They were reminded of this biblical story, and that was the purpose of this. Now here's another interesting thing, the Bayeux Tapestry. This was not a piece of church art, but it was preserved because it found its way into a church, and churches, unlike castles, weren't allowed to fall apart, and they weren't destroyed with such frequency as, as uh, secular buildings. 35 meter long embroidery that tells a story, it tells the story of the of the coming of William to conquer England in 1066. And that changed the political landscape of England very drastically. This tells the story of events leading up to it and events afterwards. It's almost like a comic book that reads here in Latin, but we can get a translation for you, it tells the story scrolling across. It's very interesting. It was made with dyed yarn that was sewn onto a cloth after sketches of these figures were made. And it's really quite detailed and extremely lengthy. Once again, this tells a story, both in pictures and words, and it wasn't so much that accuracy of depiction was at all important. Instead, bodies had to be posed in such a way to support the story. And one thing that's kind of interesting to see here is this man and this gesture, he's waiting for the arrival of the ship, so he's putting his hand up to shade his brow. But you see, it's drawn almost like a child would draw it, a very long arm here, like it's rubbery and it's extended. It isn't important to get these details correct in this type of artwork. It was simply necessary for the whole to hang together to tell the story. And that's the end of the slides for Chapter 8.